Hello, Teacher Ellen C. here to talk to you a little bit about uh, the songs that we have in the VIP Kid classes. In level one, every class has a warm-up song, a theme song, and then a closing song. And now in level two, uh, we have warm-up songs and closing songs, but they don't have the audio with them. So I want to talk a little bit about both and how you can use them in class and why you should use them in class. I know for many people singing the songs it's like, oh no, I have to sing this. What am I going to do? Is it just a time filler? Sometimes, yeah, that's what we need to use it for. Sometimes it's a great opportunity for the kids to get up and dance and have a good time and get some of that energy out. Those are great reasons, but we can also use these warm-up songs to help our students improve their English, improve, improve their fluency, the smoothness of their speech patterns, and help them develop a more natural speaking voice. So I have some notes here that I'm going to try to go through. Hopefully this doesn't get too, um, doesn't take too many directions. If it does, I'll just start over again. So, um, you come into a level two class, for example, and you see these words for the warm up song. There's no audio attached, and all of a sudden now you're, you're reading, This is to the tune of. And I know from reading Facebook posts that many of you have said, Oh my goodness, how do I fit these words into this tune? Sometimes it works great, sometimes it doesn't. Do you sing the song with the students? Do you just read the words? Do you totally skip over it? Those are things that we have to decide and sometimes it's that split second, what do we do? If you have a student who is struggling with their speaking, for example, if they said, the girl and the boy, that's not a very natural speaking voice. Now, for someone who is just learning, that's great. We just want them to speak. But when you have a student that you need to uh, scaffold up the lesson, or you um, have already worked with them, and you know that they know those lesson contents, and you want to do something to expand the lesson, this is a great opportunity. For example, I had a young boy a few days ago that I had taught in level one. Hadn't seen him for six months, and all of a sudden he's back on my schedule, yay! So he knows the lesson content, but his speaking is very word to word. So we want to help him develop into a more natural speaking pattern. This involves a number of things. First, we want them to learn to let the pitch of their voice go up and down. Just like in Chinese, Chinese has five tones. Um, up, down, and up, and the high tone, and the tone that goes down, and then also the neutral tone. So we don't distinguish those specific tones in English, but we let the pitch of our voice rise when we ask a question. How are you? We don't always do it, but when you see a question mark, you may have been taught to let your voice go up or just not staying at the same pitch all the time. That's not very interesting to listen to or a monotone. We want that pitch to change. We want the speed to change and also the volume to change. So I'm sure you've had students who love to yell, hello teacher, and then we can practice Hello, teacher. Hello, teacher. Hello, teacher. Hello, teacher. Bring them back down again. Let them practice the soft and the louds. As far as the pitch, this is where singing helps so much because we can sing the song that has a tune. Do, re, mi, fa, so. Me, re, blah, 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 whatever. Do, re, mi, do, re, mi. You can go up and down. Let them follow that, even with a familiar tune. 
Twinkle, twinkle, little star. They're learning to change the pitch of their voice. As far as getting that fluency or that smoothness, when we sing, we connect the words. We blend word to word together. We don't sing twinkle, twinkle, little star. We blend it. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. We take a breath where there's a punctuation mark or where we need it. But we try to elongate, make those phrases longer and longer. And that's where singing warm-up songs can help us. So the young man that I spoke about the other day, the words to his first few lines, the girl and the boy, the girl and the boy. Hi-ho, the Dario, the girl and the boy. You may already recognize that this one suggested the tune of The Farmer in the Dale. So the first thing we did was to read the words. And that was very slow. The girl and the boy. Then he read the next one. The girl and the boy. He even got in a few little extras and does, uh, you know, like that. Um, the girl and uh, the boy. So to try to help him smooth that out, we sang it. I sang it for him. The girl and the boy. We still got the uh. The girl and uh, the boy. Listen. The girl and the boy. He did it. Okay, let's go to the next time. The girl and the boy. <gasps> Two times. Hi ho the dairy ho. The girl and the boy. <gasps> he did it. Then we went back again and we spoke it. The girl and the boy. He did it. He left out the and a. Uh, and just said, the girl and the boy. Yay! We celebrated. That was so good. I was so proud of him for doing that. A couple of other things that you can do to help your students warm up and to prepare to speak English. One of them is to do lip rolls or to buzz your lips. Of course, they love to do that. It can be the sound of a car, the sound of a boat, the horse. Let them do lip rolls. Then change the pitch. Can't do it today. Or start high. This exercises their lips too and helps them to relax because some English sounds require a more relaxed mouth, especially like eh, eh, eh. It's different from the E, 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 E. It's more relaxed. So they can do the lip rolls. Also, funny faces. Great. Stretch your mouth. E, E, Ah, Ah, Oh, Oh, Ooh, E, Ah. Many of the Chinese people whom I know don't open their mouths very much, but in English we do. Some of us more than others, I realize that. But they've got to get comfortable with opening their mouth more than just talking through the closed mouth. So that's where stretching your mouth, ee, and you know the little kids love to do that. Hee 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 hee, ah! Get your kids to do that. Okay, let me check real quick again, see what else I have. See if I have any other notes. So we start the blending. Okay, you're in a lesson and they're having difficulty saying a sentence. Put it to a tune or have them hum it. <laughs> the girl and the boy, even rhythmic speaking can start to help to blend that together.
So put a sentence to a rhythm or a tune uh, to help your students develop their natural speech pattern. Even for the level ones, when they are singing, they are already hearing that pitch, hearing the pitch, the speed, the freak, you know, the, the volume of it. If you have your students singing like I did with mine, the beginning of that, the girl and the boy, we did it very slowly at the beginning. At the end of class, try it faster. The girl and the boy, the girl and the boy, hi-ho the dairy oh, the girl and the boy. I realize that's very fast for someone who's just learned it, but let them try it. If they never try it, they'll never be able to do it. I hope this helps a little bit. There may be a part two to this later, but use those songs. Don't just overlook them. Don't just read them. Pick out two or three lines to sing. You can make those work or make up your own tune. It doesn't have to be the tune that's suggested in there. But use those things to help your students develop a more natural fluency and smoothness in their speaking. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you have a great day. See you next time. Bye.